now let's see how we write the code to generate the news feed item. And what I've done is I have already written the code and I've run it once so I can show you what is going to be generated. This is the one line story. My username added a pic. Facebook puts the comment link in here. And do I want to like it? And this is my action link. Visit Plattsburgh Picks. This will take me back to my app. So this is the one line story template that I created. It'll show up in my news feed and it may show up in my friends' news feeds. That's what we're going to do now. Now, the code that I used to create a pick, to add a pick, is in this routine add pick. And we've worked on it before. You see I have the standard includes. I have the code up here that I have at the beginning of just about every routine where I'm unloading parameters and put them in local variables. And then here is the code. And you've seen this code before. Because we've worked through it, we check to see if it's already there. And if it's OK to add it, then we insert it. This is the new code that we use to generate the news feed. And that's all that we need to do once we have built the template. And most of the time, what most people do is to use these same variable names all over the place because it makes the code very easy to read. The first thing you need is you need the template bundle ID. Now what you're going to do is you're going to call this routine feed publisher user action which takes four parameters. And yes, I could have pasted the template ID in here, but most of the time people put it into a variable so that this section of code down here is the same you can just copy and paste it so I need the template bundle ID and if you recall what I said is I need to keep track of the tokens that I have created in my template and I'm going to build them up I need to set values for the pick name token and for the address token and then I'm going to put them into an array that I construct here and I call it tokens and I'm going to be passing it in as the second parameter. So I'm just building an array with two items, pick name, and that has the variable name that I've picked up from the parameters that were passed in. And you see it's coming in up here as one of these parameters here. And I'm decoding it, putting it there. I then pass name into the insert command so that's where it gets into the database and now I'm going to pick it up to use here for the pick name token what I'm doing also is I'm going to concatenate three of the parameters that came into this method they always came into this method this is what's unloading that form and putting it into the database you see up here we're putting in the addresses and then I'm creating a concatenated string of the address, the city, and the state, and putting it in my address token. If there were targets, user IDs, I would put them in a target IDs array, which is needed for the uh, third parameter of feed publisher user action. If you have nothing, just have an empty array. Body general, I'm also not using. So the only two things that I had to do were to set the bundle ID name and whatever tokens I have created in my template. Those are the two things I need to do. And these two lines, the last two lines of the call, are always the same. And if body general is empty and if target IDs is empty, they have no effect. I call them and then I redirect to the code that this generates the news item that I've added a pick. Then I redirect to the code that will add or remove it from my list of picks. By default, as I said when we first wrote this code, when I add a pick, I also, by default, add it to my list of picks. But this is the code here that generates the news feed item. That's all you do, and it's standard code. The only code you have to change is the bundle ID and whatever tokens you are using. And that's all it takes to generate a news feed item.